Let's see, before I drag them out, because that's kind of like a fast and furious process, um, these two babies came from um, what's called Rescue 911. And Rescue 911 is a wildlife removal animal service for like pesky wildlife. Um, they get phone calls, um, attic, where they're in attics, pools, um, boats, garages, those type of things. Um, Rescue 911 is called. A lot of times they'll remove the adult and not realize that there's babies there for three or four days before you start hearing them. Um, if they get up in attics, a lot of times babies, after they get to the point that they are at now where they can actually move around really good, they'll fall down in the walls. Um, and also in chimneys are another really bad place that, that especially the baby raccoons are. Um, the lady that I wildlife work under, wildlife rehab under, is Donna Robinson. And she is on my Facebook page, so you can go to her. Um, she is actually the licensed rehabber for Texas uh, Metro Wildlife. And they are rehabilitators. Um, currently, um, she has raccoons, possums, deer, squirrels, and skunks. So, um, these two guys are actually six weeks old, both. They are a brother and a sister, and um, everything that is done for the rehabbers um, is out of their own pockets. They survive solely on donation. So, the caging, bedding, food, pens, outdoor pens, anything that that entails actually comes out of their pockets. Um, so donations are wonderful. Paper towels, um, baby wipes, dog food. They go through lots of dog food. Once these guys get up old enough, they will actually move to eggs, dog food, worms, um, those kinds of things. They will be released. They, they get shots also. They're vaccinated so that they can't get or pass on rabies, distemper, those kinds of things. Um, they'll that way they are healthy when they go back out and they don't they don't catch anything or, or breed anything. Once they go back out into the wild, we put up self feeders for um, through the winter because they'll be, leave, be released right, right around fall before the winter. Um, those self feeders are filled with dog food so that through the winter they're not thrown back into a shock. They have food to go back to and they know where the feeders are. That's where they're released at. Um, and then eventually over time that weans off and they can, they're all on their own. Um, it takes approximately, um, on, look through here and I can give you an exact figure. Um, if there's not any vet bills incurred, um, then you're looking at approximately, like the formula for these guys, it's a specially ordered formula through Fox Formula. It's the only thing they can have. Um, a lot of people will get animals and think they can have um, whole milk, baby milk. Um, that's not true, actually. That's why their animals usually end up passing on or being extremely sick. Um, it's an actual raccoon formula that is for them specifically. Um, that is a 25-pound bucket, cost about $250. It will feed um, eight coons for one month. So. Um, Donna, the lady that these actually that I'm rehabbing under for her, has taken in 42 raccoons so far. So you can see there's kind of where the need is for the formula and stuff there. Um, they're, these guys will be kept until they're about six months old before they're released back out. So through that time they still have to be fed and, and they'll graduate up into to bigger facilities, bigger cages. Um, and then eventually outdoors where they can go through the trees and that kind of thing and kind of learn um, learn their surroundings again. Um, I'm fixing to pull out Jay-Z, who is the little boy in this, um, this group, um, and let you kind of get a close look of what it's like when they eat. They're extremely fast, so. What's the girl's name? The girl's name is Beyonce. <laughs> This is Jay-Z, um, and you can see they have little fingers, four fingers and a thumb, just like humans do. 
um, they hang on just like they would on a mama. They're extremely loving, very affectionate. They're extremely hungry right now though, so bear with me because this will this is kind of a kind of a fast process. We're kind of a pig. This is typically, you see, they hold on just like, pretty much like infants do. They hold their own bottle. Um, and like I said, they go down really fast. They are just like um, babies in the fact that when he gets done with this, he will actually have to be burped. And like I said, they're, they're pigs. This one is not so much as pig as that one is. Um, also, you'll notice when he gets done with this, pull it out of his mouth, he will spaz out. It takes them a couple of three minutes to realize that they're actually full. They are, they actually are fed based upon their weight. Um, these little guys eat at seven in the morning, at noon, at five, and at ten. And then they go all night then without a bottle. And this is just like burping a baby. And then as you can see, as they realize that they're actually full, they start to slow down. And get sleepy. Um, their little claws are sharp. That's what you have to watch. But as we get full, we kind of just start getting really, 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 really laid back. <laughs> like I said, they're extremely affectionate. Um, they like to be held, loved on, cuddled. Um, they do make noises. The mamas usually can rub them. She will probably make a noise. Oh, there he goes. I can hear him. It's kind of like a purring. You probably can't hear him over JC hollering or over her hollering. Um, after they eat, um, just like baby kittens, baby dogs, um, they do have to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to go help him. You actually have to help them go to the bathroom. So I'm going to let him potty and then we will feed her. So give me so, just a second. You have to watch your fingers with her because she does have little teeth and she will get a hold of you if she gets the opportunity. Not on purpose, just because she thinks she's dying. And she is normally easier to feed like this. <laughs> normally. <laughs> Um, and her deal is, is she gets, she thinks she's starving to death. Um, and what I'm doing right here is holding their little mouth so that they don't break suction and suck down a lot of air. Um, but you can see there's probably a pretty good view of their thumb and, and fingers just like humans. That was fast. Yes. She's she's a spazoid. And then she puts her fingers in her mouth. So it'll take her just a second to realize that she's full.
normally she's easier to hold like this until she realizes she's full. Uh -huh. And it's easy to see when they start filling up, when they start realizing they start getting really slow. And then we calm back down. I don't think she has her sea legs very well yet either. There she goes. Okay, I'm full now. <laughs> <laughs> they're extremely fast. You have to watch even at this size, they're fast. And what's the group again? The actual group name, let me get on here so I don't give you. The actual group name that they are listed under is Texas Metro Wildlife Rehabilitators. They're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And we'll link that up with the YouTube file along with share it when we put it on Facebook okay. and Twitter. So make sure and look for it there. Thank you so much, Monica. You're